definitely, definitely gets better. But at the same time, there's so many resources that I still learned of um, and continue to learn of. So never um, be scared to ask questions. Never be scared to just be open to realize that you have every type of resource in your hands. So I thought coming in, yeah, I want to know and grasp any type of resource that I can, but I was always asking questions. I'm just that annoying. So I kind of yeah. anything that was around. Um, so that was my perspective on it. When you know your future career is going to be saving people's lives, I kind of feel like asking questions is, is going to be pretty important. I'm sure your future patients will that. appreciate that you ask the questions when you have the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Sure. This is one of the few programs where, you know, you know, literally there are lives at stake. I mean, no pressure, but um, you know, it's, it's pretty important, right? Thanks, Luz. Uh, Julianne. Um, I definitely was thinking about this question a lot and um, was able to reflect on that. And I definitely resonate with a lot of things that Dr. Manny said during her presentation, um, especially that nursing isn't just a major or a job, it's a lifestyle. And a lot of my advice kind of goes back to that. Um, especially with the nursing community at Bloomsburg, you, um, it's very different from any other um, program or major where you actually um, have a lot of similar classes and you're with that group of people almost every single day for four years. You can guarantee that every class you're gonna take, you're gonna be sitting next to pretty much the same people um, all the time. So you really get to build connections and create a family um, with those people. So I would definitely recommend to any first year that you make a lot of friends within the nursing department because they will be with you until the very end. Um, they will become like family members. They will be um, people that you can study with. They can be people that you can spend time with. And so as far as I'm a commuter at Bloomsburg and a lot of my friends didn't get to make it home for Easter. So I, um, invited them to my family Easter dinner. So it really is a lifestyle. Um, it's a family, it's a community, and you can you know that you can rely on everyone. Um, as Lou said, you have so many resources available to you that are always at your fingertips. Your um, professors and your faculty members, your clinical instructors really do give you their personal phone numbers and you can call them and text them as much as you want, as long as they're not sleeping. Um, and they are there for you. Um, they care about your mental health, they want to check in on you, and they want to make sure that you're doing okay, even if it's not nursing related. Um, and you really notice growth within yourself. So I would recommend to any first year that even though it may seem a little bit overwhelming or stressful, that um, there are rewards and that they do come and not give up on yourself. Um, you really get to see that growth within yourself and you blossom into the person that you didn't even know was inside of you because um, the faculty and the experiences that you get at Bloomsburg are unlike any other program. Yeah, great. Thanks, Julianne. Brendan. Um, as Lou said, it's important to ask questions for sure. Um, you know, you know, you're know, you not always going to know the answer. I think I was talking to Dr. Manny about this a few weeks ago is that you, you're you not always perfect and you don't always know the answer. So it's awesome to ask questions. I think one thing that I would like to know as a first year student is um, kind of the reward that you get from being in clinical and, uh, you know, working with patients and like that hands-on experience. Um, we didn't get as much last semester because of, uh, you know, when the university shut down, but this year I kind of really, you know, it, nursing school has been uh, challenging for me just, um, you know, to, to continue, like to get, get through and um, the hands-on and working with patients has really like reassured me and helped me like get through almost um, because I've realized that, oh wait, this is, this is really what I want to do. And I really enjoy this aspect of it. So definitely the knowing that, it's the first year can be challenging, can be different being away from home and um, having to just do uh, manage your classes on your own. But then once you kind of get into a rhythm, it gets, it gets a lot better. All right, great. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, so another question, um, your favorite class to, that you've either A, taken or B, taught, depending. So obviously if you're a student, what was your favorite class you've taken for the faculty, your favorite class that you teach within the, that's either in the nursing program or part of like the nursing program extended universe, looking at you, Dr. Zimmerman. And uh, we'll start with uh, Devin. Oh, I have to say adult, adult health one. That's my course. That's mm -hmm. my baby. Um, I've been in adult health one every semester since 2012. Um, I've built 
strong relationships with our people at Geisinger. Um, and I love the junior level. I love that the students still need me <laughs> just enough and that I get to see their light bulbs turn on because this is the semester it happens. Oh, that's why that's high. Or mm -hmm. oh, now I see that the heart fails and this happens. And so I love that they're, they're kind of in that stage where they still need me, um, but they're still independent enough to be confident um, mm -hmm. and I can watch them grow. So, so adult, adult health, health one. So uh, adult health, I guess that means that uh, students are spending a lot of time um, in the field. Oh yeah, we spend 14 okay. hours a week together. Yep, in 14 clinical hours a week, okay. Just in clinical. And then if they're in my clinical group, they have the luxury of having me another three hours for lab. Oh wow, lecture, okay. They're, getting, lecture, they're, so. they're getting a double um, dose. Yeah, oh yeah, they, they get plenty of me. I don't know what they think of that, but. <laughs> I'm sure they love it. Uh, Dr. Zimmerman. I can't pick between the two chemistry classes. I mean, I've taught both. The chemistry 101 um, is more of your, the, the, the general types of chemistry and the concepts. And I mentioned before, and I'll say it again, there are some chemistry 101 sections that do not have any nursing students. And there are those that do have nursing students. And we want to have the ones with the nursing students in because they are dedicated and they're asking questions. They're much more interactive. Um, I will say the other part that I have taught is the second semester lab. And the thing that's really cool about that one is uh, the lab sizes are 18 students per lab. And so it's small. And so you get to know the students. And so I remember teaching before there, there was a softball player, you know, just, just little things, little personal things that you could get and interact with the students. And for me, in terms of my job, the most fulfilling thing is getting to know the students it's, it's yes, we love when the light bulbs go on, when someone doesn't understand something and then all of a sudden, bing, they understand it. We love that part of it and that's fulfilling, but it's also just getting to know the students. And then later on, you're walking down the quad and it's like, I had that student, oh, and then I'm embarrassed because I can't remember their name, but I would say I, both of the chemistry teach, the courses that the nurses take um, are really, really fun to teach. And I don't know what else to say. They're just fun to teach. I think the, one, the second semester gets into more of the applications of things. Like we have a lab that we test the, the, uh, um, the sunscreens and how well they uh, protect. So you, can, you know, there's all these different brands and there's all these yeah. SPF numbers and, and all that kind of thing. And uh, that, that's one of the things that is, it's a little bit more applied there or there's some different yeah. ones with sugars and different things like that. But, and so it's a little bit more focused on the actual things that are closer to the, the, the biochemistry aspects of the, of the chemistry that we teach. All right, pretty cool. Thank you, Dr. Zimmerman. Uh, Dr. Schaffer Fry. Well, I, so I have to agree with Dr. Manny about adult, adult health one. That is a, a really fun class to teach for the reason she said. Um, but like I said earlier, I also teach sophomores in foundations. So I'm going to speak about that um, and why I enjoy teaching that, that course. Um, so that is occurs in the spring, so second semester sophomore year. And this is when nursing students, uh, for the most part, are going into the hospital for the very first time. So I'm there for a lot of firsts. So I hear um, a lot of, you know, my favorite expression is when the first time students give medications. And I hear, and I love this, is I finally feel, feel like a nurse. So that is a huge step and, um, you know, it, it, it's a really good feeling for me. It's a good feeling for them. They feel confident. They feel like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm here. Um, I get to do this. Um, I get to see a huge growth in confidence. You know, some, a lot of times, the very first time we walk into that hospital, walking into the patient's room, I need to walk in with the student and say, here, I'll go with you. You know, we'll you know, we'll do this together, you know, kind of introduce yourself to the patient, talk to them. By the end of the semester now, barring the spring, which was different, 
Um, I see them, you know, going in, taking care of patients. They're, um, you know, much more independent, much more confident, uh, feeling good about themselves and ready to move on. So that's a really fun thing about that semester is that that huge growth and seeing all those first experiences with students. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, Luce, your favorite class. I think my favorite class remains anatomy and physiology because mm -hmm. I'm just in my first semester of sophomore, so I'm still not done with these. Um, and it's my first, very first nursing classes. So uh, they're fun because um, we get, I get to finally do more things and just, you know, um, the mm -hmm. prerequisites. But um, anatomy and physiology definitely was my first one. It was rough, but my first one. But you made it through. Yes, I did. <laughs> Good. Julianne. Um, although um, I am a senior and I only have one semester left, fingers crossed, um, of classes, I've been able to have a lot of experiences with all of the classes and reflect on which one I think what is my favorite. Um, although there hasn't been any one that I've disliked, I definitely um, take a liking to um, maternal and child health nursing. Uh -huh. Um, it's your first taste of a specialty in nursing. Um, up until that point, you've only had um, either foundations or adult health one, which just um, deals with um, an adult. Um, and with maternal and child health, you get to experience um, such monumental times in these people's lives, whether it be like the happiest moment of their life, they're giving birth to their first child after having complications or getting to just watch these kids fight for um just fight for another day and it definitely isn't always easy to see that but getting to do those little things with them and make them feel like a kid even for a couple minutes of the day is so rewarding and I definitely take a liking to that you get um experience um at the bedside and also um outpatient as well. You get to go to um, women's health clinics and um, pediatric clinics. I also got to do a rotation in the NICU for a day, which was very exciting and um, had a lot of um, rewards with that as well. And I also got to spend a day in the nursery at the um, on the maternity unit. So I got to um, see how the role changes with um, a postpartum nurse, an active labor nurse, or a nursery nurse. Um, so there are a lot of fun things that you get to see um, in that class that you haven't learned about up until that point. It's two completely different specialties, um, completely different than any adult that you'll care for. So it's very exciting to kind of take that step in knowing, oh, well, maybe I like this and maybe this is what I want to do in the field of nursing that I want to pursue. Julianne, have you uh, made any decisions on what direction you like to go in? Your senior. Um, I'm trying to keep my options open as much as I can. Um, I was lucky enough, as Dr. Manny had said, I, um, there are externship opportunities. So I was able to extern this summer at Geisinger Medical Center in Danville and get a lot of hands-on experience throughout the summer, um, taking the role as the nurse. Um, I definitely would love to see myself in maybe a labor and delivery role or pediatric. Um, but I don't want to limit myself to that. I was able to do a rotation over the summer um, at the adult oncology unit, which is um, Bush Pavilion 8 um, at Geisinger. And I loved that. Um, I love the atmosphere. Um, but I still kind of have, um, I'm trying to keep my options open. I would love to see myself anywhere. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to kind of make those final decisions, but trying to hold on to um, some last final um, experiences that I get with clinical um, this semester and next semester before I make any final decisions, but hopefully over Christmas break. Julianne, it's only what you're going to do for the rest of your life. So, I mean, it's not like there's that much at stake. So, I mean, the, the beauty of nursing, though, is that you can do about just anything with nursing. You don't have to limit yourself to doing one specialty for forever. If you find, oh, I want to try this, then you can try that. There are administrative roles, there are um, educator roles. You can um, move um, upward, you can become a nurse practitioner and a, a nurse mm -hmm. anesthetist. So, the options are endless. And that's what I love about nursing nursing is because I'm an indecisive person I don't have to worry about making any long-term decisions because yeah. I know there will always be other options yeah <laughs> so you're also very self-aware good for you I will <laughs> say um so both my, my wife and I we have two kids two toddler children they were both born at Geisinger in both cases they were uh, 
uh, BU nursing alums were our, our primary care um, throughout the course of delivery. We still like trade emails back and forth. I mean, it's, um, we didn't, we got to know the nurses pretty well and they were fantastic. I mean, it's, they were exactly what um, Dr. Mandy, what you would describe this entire night. I mean, it was, it, it was, it, it was an amazing experience because of them. So I, I, I have some personal stake in the BU nursing program. So, um, so Julian, so I heard you talk, talking about maternal and fetal medicine and remind me of my experience. So great. Thank you. Uh, Brendan. I'm going to have to say as of right now, it's adult health one. Um, I've been really enjoying the course. Uh, it's, uh, the first time we've been in the hospital. Is Dr. Manny teaching the class? Dr. Manny is teaching the class. I'm in her class. That was the right <laughs> answer, my friend. That was the right answer. <laughs> I mean, I did enjoy foundations with Dr. Toothaker. Um, at, which was awesome too. It just, we didn't have as much experience, but, um, this, uh, semester has been really great. Um, I think like the first week that we were in clinical, we had just learned about seizures and I had taken a patient on who had a seizure. And so it was kind of like really been really connecting a lot of like what we've been learning in class. And then like that week having a patient that's almost exactly like what we learned. Um, so that's been really cool to kind of make those connections and have that, together in in the course sure great thanks brendan um and julianne this is probably just a question for you your experience in clinicals walk us through a day as a clinical student well they julianne and brendan can talk about oh that. okay you can learn about that yeah here you go <laughs> Um, so it all starts before your day even starts. You'll usually go in the day before. Um, your um, nursing instructor will post your assignment um, mm -hmm. and you are usually spending, you could spend as little as 20 minutes there depending on if you um, know the patient or they have a very short history or you could be spending about an hour, an hour and a half there. Um, this time is dedicated to looking through your patient's, your patient's chart, looking at their diagnosis, their labs, um, any pertinent information, um, writing it down, and then you take that home with you to um, begin your paperwork and to make those connections for the day ahead of you or the days ahead of you. Um, you can read um, chapters from your textbook about um, the disease process that your patient is suffering from. So you can kind of know um, what your goals for your patient will be. What care would you wanna give them? What are their priorities? What are things that you can, ex um, what you can expect to see? And that way you are prepared um, for anything that can come. Um, for the day. And I mean, you, you can never be um, prepared enough. So you definitely take that time to prepare and then go into your day. Um, you'll start your day pretty early, usually, um, depending on what rotation you have, either mornings or evenings. Um, you'll grab some vital signs and you'll meet with your clinical instructor to create um, a mutual plan of what your goals for the day will be. Um, what care do you want to provide to your patient? What um, would you, what improvements would you like to see them make? Um, you'll also learn from the nurse and see, well, what are their goals? Are they the same as your goals? Are you missing anything? What can you learn from them? So you're collaborating with not only the nurses, but the care management team, physicians, um, pretty much anyone on the unit and as well as the patient. So it's a lot of collaborating with the patient um, and doing a lot of education as well. You wanna teach the patient how they can avoid um, having a hospital stay if it's something that they can prevent. You want to, um, you know, tailor to their education needs and how they learn, and they definitely appreciate those things. So you're never bored at clinical. You are always busy, and you can always learn. Even if there's something that is not related to your patient, definitely take those opportunities to learn from either other students or patients that might not be yours. If you see something exciting, ask the nurse if you can go in there and take advantage of those opportunities to learn at all, um, at all costs. So definitely, um, a lot of learning and a lot of growing. Every single day, you um, wouldn't believe the things that you experience and how you can become a better nurse. Great, great, thanks, Julianne. Brendan. Yeah, so, um, I mean, Julianne covered uh, the clinical day pretty well. Um, I would just say that it's, uh, it's uh, the patients really appreciate your help when you are with them because it's, it's kind of a different experience for them because uh, especially now we're on a, a floor where the nurses might have like three or four patients. And so yeah. when we go in to work with them, they have us all day um, mm -hmm. if, if for right now. Um, and it's, we usually devote a lot of our attention to them and they're usually very appreciative 
of our help and our guidance. And sometimes I've even had patients where um, I've taught them some things and they are like, I haven't heard this yet. So um, they've been very appreciative of, you know, our help and our knowledge and things that maybe um, the nurse in, in pr completing their other work may have not uh, fully explained. I've had some patients whose anxiety has way decreased um, based on like things that I've taught them. Um, we also, you know, do uh, have a project, a teaching project. So we do learn how to, you know, teach our patients and use the material that the hospital has to um, give them, to help them stay out of the hospital as long as they can. Um, and yeah, clinical is just an awesome experience. I really love it. Um, getting up at 5.30 is great. <laughs> I usually am pretty happy. <laughs> How many cups of coffee do you have before you're ready to go? I usually only have like half a cup um, and oh, then wow, just to some good music and put the windows down on the way there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a good idea. Great. Um, can, can anyone in the group, can you talk about the social engagement, the community building within nursing? So for example, like what's happening within the nursing community at Bloomsburg outside the brick and mortar of the classroom? Right. What are some of the things you're involved in, some of the things that you're leading, some of the activities that nursing students might be participating in when they close the books and they're ready to go do something that is non-academic, non-directly academic related. I'm sure everything indirectly is academic, but um, anyone want to go first? Um, I can go first. Um, there are so many opportunities to be involved in nursing um, once you um, leave the classroom. Um, two of my favorite um, organizations, one of them being Student Nurses Association. I know Dr. Manny is my advisor. Um, I am the treasurer of Student Nurses Association and SNA is basically an organization where nursing majors can come together. Um, to meet once a month to um, discuss um, happenings within the community that in could involve us and how we can contribute. Um, so we do a lot of volunteer work and service activities that um, promote the community um, that we live in. Um, we do service activities for um, nursing facilities, the women's shelter, donations to the food cupboard. We participate in the homecoming parade every year. Unfortunately, we couldn't have one this year. Um, so we are really involved in the community through SNA. Um, so my role is we usually um, uh, do like fundraisers throughout the semester to raise money for um, a banquet at the end of the year where we can celebrate all of our accomplishments um, as, a, um, as a major together. Um, so we do fundraising such as clothing activities, um, clothing fundraisers, and we also sell chocolate bars. That's what we did um, last year. So that is um, a way that nursing majors can get involved. And it's not directly nursing involved my other organization, but I'm the event coordinator of Bloomsburg University Dance Marathon, um, which is an event similar to THON, if you're familiar with it, Penn State's THON or many THONs that are done at other high schools or dance marathons where it is a um, culmination, it's a culminating event um, at the end of every school year where we celebrate um, fundraising activities that we've done up until that point to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. Um, like I said, I definitely have a liking for um, those tiny humans and those fighters who are put in situations that they definitely don't deserve. And the beauty of um, our marathon is that all of the money that we raise throughout the year goes to um, our local Miracle Network Hospital, which is Dan Janet Wise, where we do our clinical rotation. So it is a absolutely beautiful thing to see um, it come full circle, being able to fundraise that money and then getting to go into the clinical um, floors and see where that money goes and the children that you get to impact. So those are just two examples of ways that um, people can get involved, um, nursing or non-nursing, um, that really can show you that there are so many avenues to nursing and to also have fun, to take a break for yourself and make a difference in other people's lives and just enjoy the company of your nursing family and friends um, through those um, types of activities. Yeah, great answer, great. Thank you. Luce, go ahead. 
just to add to what Julianne said, I am also in SNA. So she described SNA just perfect. So that was very good. But um, that is something obviously to get involved in. Something very nice. You still see, you know, some of your nursing friends in there too. So it's kind of good to just go and instruct yourself. Um, it also feels good to do those things that, you know, will help um, the community. So in addition to that, um, for incoming freshmen, the, the, um, it was mentioned before the learning communities. So there is a nursing learning community and I was involved in the learning in the nursing learning community as a freshman. Um, that made me feel closer to everyone because I was able to do it as a commuter as well. So I commute, I don't think I mentioned this, but I commute from Hazleton. So Julianne lives in Bluesburg, so she has a, less of a drive, but I'm farther, so I can't just go and so, um, being in the learning community was great. I felt coming in my first day of class, I gave directions to a freshman and I was a freshman because I was able to come a week before class started and I was assigned to a mentor that will mentor you the entire semester, will check up on you, will have meetings with you, how are classes? And basically they just talk, you know, and see who they can communicate to help you and give you resources as to how and when you can help yourself. So they took us the week before, we did different activities, different little fun, different activities that we could do. And one of those were to take a trip around campus and they showed us our buildings that we would normally be in a lot. So Heartline, where you would have anatomy and physiology and you would ha um, have your, um, your science classes and you have your, um, chemistry classes, sometimes Centennial, that you would have used that a lot. Um, so McCormick, you will use that a lot, especially moving on to other nursing classes. So they gave us a tour and I was coming in as a freshman, like I'm not a freshman. <laughs> so I felt, it felt really good. So that was another thing. So that is very, very important for um, freshmen coming in, take advantage of that because there you had your, you know, you had um, different review sessions um, for anatomy classes. In addition to that, you had the mentors get together and help you guide you a little bit through what is scheduling like. So it shows you what you need in your nursing handbook that you will get coming in as a freshman. If you decide to um, apply for the nursing program, you will have that and it's your Bible. So everything is stated there. And they also tell you and guide through that some of the classes that they um, you need to take. And these mentors tell you or advise to you what classes should be taken um, in comparison to your other classes too. So also if you have a very hectic semester with your nursing classes, what kind of um, other classes can you take like that it's gonna be less heavy? So they give you information about that and it's just very, very helpful. So remember learning communities, any, most <laughs> majors have it. So they are a great, great resource as well. Great, thank you, Luz. Just to add, if they don't know the answer, they will point you to who has the answer. So don't feel that go. people will never have the answer because you will. <laughs> That's our mantra in nursing. If we don't know the answer, we'll find it out. Right. Great, great. Thank you, Luz. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Um, I would like to just uh, agree with Luz that um, the learning communities are great. I was in the, they didn't have the nurses uh, learning community when I was a freshman, but I was in the health science learning community and I lived in Columbia with a bunch of other health science majors. And that was an awesome help because we all would walk to anatomy together and all had this exams at this around the same time. So that all so totally helped. Um, other than nursing uh, organizations, I'm involved in the orientation leaders, um, mm -hmm. which is really great. Hopefully you'll get to meet us in the fall um, where it's kind of like a vein of nursing because there are a lot of nursing majors in uh, the <laughs> house um, and we are you know, there to help um, people move in and help you learn about campus and classes and everything. So if you aren't in the learning community, we're there to help too. Um, and I'm also involved in a few choirs uh, on campus as well as the uh, Bloomsburg Little Huskies, which is a, a, almost like a big brother's uh, big sisters club. You're a busy man. Might yes. have been easier for you to name the things you're not involved in. You know, uh, it, it might have, yes. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you. Uh, any, anyone from the faculty, anything that you see your students generally getting involved in? Like, are they, you know, going out for lunch together or like, how are they interacting when they're not in class? I mean, it seems to me that they're all, you know, the nurses kind of travel in packs, you know, they're a pretty tight knit community. Is that safe to say? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're a tight knit community. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I, one of the students had a question for me and I, she said, can I, can you call me? And I called her and three nursing students popped up on the voice. <laughs> on the speakerphone. They're always together. Um, 
One of the uh, one extension I would like to point out of SNA is NSNA, which is the National Student Nurses Association. I have been the um, I've been working as the advisor with students for that for since I'm back at BU in the faculty role. And um, basically, what we do for that is through SNA fundraising and things of that nature, it helps to fund the um, the trip, not entirely, but to a certain extent. And our students, we work with myself and other faculty members, will work with students to develop professional posters on projects they've done within our nursing program. So they take something they've already done, we help them turn it into a professional poster, and then they go to the national convention, which is held at different places throughout the United States every year, and they present their professional posters. At those conferences, they have the opportunities to network with graduate schools and hospitals all over the country. And one of the things that always get, what the students always say to me when they're done was, wow, they really like BSN students. Like they really want us. I'm like, yes, they really want you. And then the other thing they usually say, because they all participate in the NCLEX review, which is our national licensure. They say, our tests are like NCLEX questions. I said, mm -hmm, that is correct. So we're not crazy and we're not trying to drive you nuts. We're trying to prepare you to sit one time for that NCLEX exam and pass. Because nobody wants to have to live that more than once if they can avoid it. Um, so yeah, the National Student Nurse Association is a wonderful opportunity for students to get out there and network on a national level, learn about um, issues facing students and nurses nationally, and um, build a resume because you know it's it's really something to be able to put on there that you've done a national professional poster presentation when you're leaving your undergraduate career. Um, so that is an extension. We also have ASIG, which is Aging Special Interest Group. It is not surely nursing students. That is an interdisciplinary group. And the one year for ASIC, they had a prom at a local nursing home. So our students and other students from other majors at Bloomsburg University went and dressed up and they had a prom at a nursing home for the nursing home patients. So um, there are opportunities beyond SNA and SNA and those associated things, um, as Julianne had mentioned and Brendan and, and Luce. Um, there are things when you get a little bit of time away from your book that you can enjoy as well. Yeah, and, and that's, those, I'm sorry, uh, th those are great stories to hear, yeah, because I mean, you're going to spend a lot of time in, in classes, you're going to spend a lot of time in the library, but I think, you know, it's also nice that you're in, you're going through this with a, a cohort of students that are all in the same situation, and I think that kind of help eases the burden a little bit of, of some of this, this studying part of this. Um, final question for the night, um, for the students in the group, what made you want to be a nurse? What was the experience you had when you were a kid when you were in high school that said, you know what, boom, this is exactly what I want to do. Luce. Um, for me personally, um, so growing up, my mom had always, you know, I'm not sure when it began, but she's had health issues um, such as hypertension, which is high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol started. So, but um, I would not really see my mom like the entire day. I would wake up and she was sent to school and I'd probably see her again. 5 p.m., 6 p.m. So there would be times I'll be home before her because she was in the hospital and I had no idea. Like, okay, she was in the hospital. She gets home and I'm, mm, that's it. Like, I don't know anything. Even if it was explained to me, I was young and I wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in terms of just in general for anyone, I always want to help in a way. Um, and I feel bad that when somebody says, I hurt somewhere or I'm feeling this way. It's like, I just sit here. I'm like, well, I don't want you to feel like that, but I also don't know how to help you. So um, it does, I say that to myself. So I always, I was always encouraged to want to learn more. And it's not just the typical answer. I want to help people, but why do you want to help people? Mm -hmm. um, and it's more because I feel helpless and I don't like feeling like that. So um, I wanted to learn more and how can I apply that? And in addition to that, I was able to become a CNA, so a certified nursing assistant um, in high school. So I am working with Bayada Pediatrics Home Health um, mm -hmm. now, and I love doing that. So I'm able to help, um, not in the nurse level, and um, register nurse level, but I'm still able to help. So it makes me feel better. That's great. Thanks, Luce. I appreciate that. Uh, Julianne? Um, there are a lot of reasons that I really wanted to become a nurse. Unfortunately, I um, don't have any like personal story on why I wanted to become a nurse or anything that really changed me, but it was a lot of trial and error. 
um, on my end and figuring out what avenue I wanted to pursue. I always knew that I wanted to do something in the medical field Mm -hmm. and that I wanted to care for patients on the personal level. Um, I wanted to be there for them and be able to help them during some of the most vulnerable times in their lives. And I wanted to be able to do whatever I could to help them get through that. Um, especially if they don't have a support system at home or family members who are on their side Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Um, I wanted to be able to be there for them. Um, I wanted to be um, taking care of patients hands-on. I wanted to know that um, I was going to be definitely getting something new every day um, and being on my feet and knowing that things can change very quickly um, for the better or for the worst, unfortunately. And knowing that um, you always have to be on your feet and keep your knowledge just in your back pocket at all times is very Mm -hmm. important to me. So all of those factors um, really helped me figure out that I wanted to be a nurse as well as something that one of my friends told me in high school that I'll never forget is they always said you um, you may forget a good doctor, but you'll never forget a really good nurse. Those are the oh, people who are always yeah. by your side. Doctors are in and out. You're only really talking with them for a couple minutes a day, but the nurses are there for you 24 mm-hmm. seven. And I wanted to be responsible for that. And I wanted to make that difference in people's lives. That is so true. Wow. That, yeah, that is very true. That's a good answer. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thanks, Julian. Brendan. So I guess it was kind of several things that kind of came together to help me realize I wanted to be a nurse. I definitely didn't want to uh, be in an office. (laughs) Uh, I wanted to be able to move around when I was working and like uh, Julianne said, have something different every day. Um, My brother was in the hospital. He's had a few um, intense surgeries um, when I was in high school um, where he had to get some tumors removed. So that was definitely kind of an eye-opening like oh wait uh his nurses were really great so I can probably do that um and I've had a few family members that are also nurses my um uncle who uh, were very close is like a head ER nurse at a hospital in Annapolis um so I've always looked up to him and admired him and um yeah I I applied for a uh, program in high school where we did a shadowing thing almost kind of similar to clinical but more just um observational where I got to go to the hospital every day in high school, which is really neat. Um, and that kind of sealed the deal. I was like, oh wait, yeah, as I was applying to colleges that this is this is where I wanna be. I wanna, I wanna be able to help people like all the people that I was watching. So I definitely just love, I love people. <laughs> I love talking to people and I love, I wanna be able to help them out and make them feel better. You're in the right field. Uh, faculty, any, um, any parting advice for prospective students who are looking at, uh, at the nursing program? Any, any final thought? Dr. Manny. A final thought. I don't know. Let me, let me warm you. Yes. Let me warm you up with an easy one. How similar is life as a nurse compared to what you might see in popular culture? Like let's say Grey's Anatomy. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. So uh, it's actually as, as a nurse, it's actually kind of comical to watch Grey's Anatomy. (laughs) Um, because the doctors draw labs, which never happens. And they run the patient down the hall when they're going to the OR. Sure. Also doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> but I guess the, the, impart, the imparting device would be, advice would be, if you know you want to be a nurse, it's going to take work. You're going to have to work at it. Nursing is not an easy major. And it's not an easy major because when you leave, you have one of the greatest responsibilities on this planet, and that is somebody else's life in your hands. It's not easy, but it is worth it. And every day you go to hospital, every day you go to work, it is not always going to be a great day, but there is great in every day. And so you might be having a lousy day. And one patient says to you, thank you for making me feel like a human again, because you gave them a bath. And then you realize that's why I do this. That's why I spend absurd hours on paperwork and I stress myself to the max over everything. Because when you leave our program, you're ready to face it. You you are ready to face the music. And so come in, get your connections in place. Like these are our wonderful students had said, um, find out where your support network is. Talk to Dr. Zimmerman and his colleagues in, in those freshman courses. Find out who your academic advisor is and cling to them in nursing. Work hard, keep your nose to the ground. And when you get done, the benefits are endless. And who knows, maybe one day you'll get to see the curvature of the earth too. 
Wow, you brought it all the way. You connected the dots. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Nice. Ad lib. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Dr. Zimmerman. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I was thinking about work ethic, but then I'm also thinking about we all hit things in life that we might fail at. And I think that happens to everyone. And the key is, do you get up again? Yes. You get up off the ground. And I think that in, in almost, in most areas that I can think of, you have to be able to, to get up off the ground and have the courage to do so. And yeah, there, there, there are fears at times, but to, to somehow just get up because I think if you, if you, if people are honest, everyone has those times when they get, they get just hammered and, and we have to get up. And I think it help, it ha happens all over the place in the health area. I mean, you get sick. Well, you don't, you feel awful, but depending on how sick you are, you have to have the courage to get, get going again. And I, I think, I don't know how you teach that. I don't think you teach that. I think it's something that is experienced and why, and other people are better at it than others. So that's what, that's what comes to mind. Great. Thanks, Dr. Zimmerman. Uh, Dr. Shapper Fry. Um, I'd just like to, you know, add to what Dr. Manny said. Yeah, you know, I think I've, I've been to quite a few um, nurse pinning ceremonies, graduations, probably one of the most common things I hear from, you know, the speakers, student speakers, is that this was the hardest thing they've ever done, but they got through it. They got through it with their friends, you know, with the faculty, um, with their help. But, um, you know, it is hard, but it is so worthwhile once you get through it. And I will say, you know, you know, being that guy singer, um, I've had numerous man unit managers come to me and say, tell me whatever you need, whatever your students need, because we want them to come work for us when they graduate. Um, you know, so, you know, we work hard. Um, the students work really, really hard to get where they're at when they graduate and it shows. And, um, the nurses at Geisinger know it, the administrators know it, the unit managers know it, and they want us there and they want the students there. So that hard work does pay off in the end. It, it may not feel like it in the middle, but at the end, it's worth it. Delayed gratification. Great, well, everyone, thank you so much for spending your time with us tonight. I really do appreciate it. If you have any additional questions or any follow-up information that you're looking for, please uh, reach out to our office. We're happy to help in any way that we can. And I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you.